We are just three weeks out from the Royal Rumble, the one time of the year where the superstars of Raw and SmackDown go head-to-head -to, -head to establish brand white supremacy. Wait, no, that's Survivor Series. Assuming the brand split is even still a thing based on the end of this show, but that's 30 men, 30 women, all humans had to be together. It's going to be a very crowded ring. It's going to be done with a tongue-in-cheek mentality, but congratulations, WWE. After the shit you pulled tonight, I really don't care about either the men's or the women's Royal Rumbles. Thanks a fucking lot. My favorite goddamn pay-per-view concept match of all fucking time. All fucking time. Ladder matches, tournaments, all that stuff. Whatever. I love the Royal Rumble. I love a good goddamn battle royal. And man, I don't know what the fuck they're doing, but holy fucking shit, this is going to be bad. I'm John Renton with my review, WWE Smackdown from the Mohegan Sun in Connecticut. Unkinsville, Unk I believe is how it's pronounced. I'm just going to say Connecticut because I have no idea if I'm even close to that. That almost sounds like a regurgitating noise that you make when you're trying to throw up, and that's actually pretty appropriate because I was ready to regurgitate seeing a few things on this particular show. The first SmackDown of the year, and they've shit the fucking bed. I'm not saying that WWE isn't going to produce good programming for Raw, NXT 2.0, SmackDown, and maybe some matches on the Royal Rumble card will actually be pretty goddamn good, but seriously... There's the element of surprise they're doing. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. It's no longer a pay-per-view. I'm misspeaking. It's a premium live event. Nick fucking Khan is one of the worst things to happen to wrestling, and that's including a business that had Jim fucking Hurd, Vince Russo, George Scott at the tail end of his career, and Dixie fucking Carter. Whew. Okay, as you can tell, I'm not very happy about this particular show and about the fact that they're just ruining the whole Royal Rumble premium live event concept. I'm just going to continue to butcher that whole thing. Kind of like how uh, Jim Ross and the other uh, WCW announcers, when Ted Turner said, don't call it a foreign object, don't, don't use the word foreign. So they started calling it an international object just to make fun of it. So anyway, recaps of Heyman and Bork on the whole day one thing and then on Raw. <clears throat> and then Roman is back. Hopefully healthy and to a pop. I want to say right now, you are allowed to believe whatever the fuck you want to believe, but I believe, and I have no reason not to believe, that Roman tested positive for the virus, hence why he was kept in isolation from, you know, uh, with that MSG card, and then they announced the day of the tested positive. We don't know if he tested positive at that point, and they were maybe just hoping it was a false positive or something. So, the, there are also people saying that he faked his goddamn leukemia diagnosis, so I really don't pay much mind to anybody that feels that way. But again, you can have your opinions, but the man has a compromised immune system, and this shit is real, believe it or not. WWE has made up a whole lot of stuff, particularly Vince. But I am willing to believe that Roman fucking Reigns would not do that shit, considering he would have to look his kids in the eyes, he'd have to look his wife in the eye. And also, Roman Reigns, I may not be the biggest fan of him in the ring, but he seems... Kind of like a guy that would not want to sacrifice that much of his pride, even though he did do the whole thing of suffering, suck, attach, a dog food thing and whatever. But let's just get back to the fact that he's happy, he's healthy, he is getting a pretty good pop. And Pat did have one good line. Uh, if only Pat was more intelligent with the people he brought on his show, because Pat McAfee actually is a bright, <coughs> intelligent, hilarious guy. Said COVID tested positive for Roman Reigns. That was actually a pretty good line. And... Mohegan, acknowledge my meat. I think that's what he said. And he talked about, you know, Heyman, hey, this kind of stuff, all this stuff, and whatever, and he was gone for a week, and, uh, and then here's Bork and the Heyman. It's, it's Walt Disney's favorite manager. Let's hear it for Paul. <clears throat> and he's a lesser jack, and he's okay, and the champs are staring each other down. And Bork mocks uh, Reigns. Saying, you know, all this, I, you know, did what I did. You know, he did the whole Heyman thing, the reigning, defending WWE heavyweight champion, Brock Lesnar. Uh, Bork is having a great time here, probably because he's getting paid obscene amounts of money. And he knows this is probably his last run. I know there was, like, audio that came out, oh, you know, Bork feels he might actually have a few more years in him. I don't think so. I don't really see why. I mean, at this point, what else can he do? What else can he do? I mean, nothing. I mean, <clears throat> I just, he can't just, he can't win the Royal Rumble. He's already won money in the bank because he's won the Rumble before. There's no other accolade he can fucking do. He's main event of wrestling. Anyway, so um, why don't we give everyone what they want? Because you've got to give the people, wait, that's the other show. Um, it's title for title. We're probably going to get that at Mania, and then that's going to end the brand split, which at this point with all the releases they've done from 2020, 2021, and uh, gutting the rest of the black and gold stuff and everything uh, just a couple days ago. At this point, I don't really see how they can have a brand split. 
I'd say just, you can have select people on SmackDown, select people on Raw, but you just need to rotate the stars in and out and everything. You just need to have maybe a soft brand split, but not a hard brand split, because there isn't anything else they can do. Well, they do have the next in line program going on. That's going to fucking work out real well. Maybe it will. I don't know. <sighs> I like a lot of the talent in WWE still. I like a lot of talent in AEW. I like a lot of talent in New Japan. And even though I don't keep up on Impact, there's a lot of really good talent all over the world. All over the world! But it is getting ridiculous, and it's getting hard to support these companies when you really just have to support the wrestlers despite the fact that there's a bunch of idiots running the goddamn thing. Yes, WWE is super profitable. They're doing a whole bunch of you know great business. Fantastic. You know, WCW had a lot of great business at one point, and how well that worked out for them. WWE is going to keep making obscene amounts of money at least through 2023. Now, I don't know what their TV contracts are going to be uh, by the end of that, and who knows? They might end up selling the company at some point. I, just, I can't imagine that Vince McMahon is looking to keep the company with what he's doing and whatever Nick Khan's fucking doing, or not Tony Khan as I'm calling him, even though Tony Khan at this point has kind of torpedoed his own credibility. All right, let's go back to the review. Um, Heyman was acting like a jilted girlfriend because he was just like, well, Brock, you left, and he was all I had. He was my tribal chief. I loved him. And I was like, you know, and like, shut up, Paul. Don't talk to him like that. No, you don't talk to him like that. No, I don't talk to him like that. Wait, what? Um, and then we get a Superman punch, and Bork is down. Who is Heyman aligned with? Who is he aligned with? Can they get along? Whose side is he on? Royal Rumble ad, by the way, it, the only way to be eliminated from the Royal Rumble is to be thrown over the top rope with both feet touching the floor, which means technically Kerry Von Erich has not been eliminated from the 91 and 92 Rumbles. He just was eliminated for good on February 18th, 1993. That was dark. Let's go back to this. Uh, Zane was backstage, and he was talking to... Megan looked really good, by the way. Um... And they're doing all they're doing all stuff, whatever. You know, Zane saying he'll get back his Intercontinental Championship, and he talks to Johnny Knoxville, who wants to be in the Rumble. Just, just, just fucking give up on the Rumble. Yes, I know Drew Carey was in the goddamn 2001 Royal Rumble, and that Rumble was really goddamn good. Once you got past that point, once you got to the hardcore stuff, actually the very beginning of that's kind of a dive. It's not great. And then you had Drew Carey come in, who had no business being anywhere near a goddamn wrestling promotion, nowhere near a goddamn wrestling ring, is the worst Price of the Rice ho right host. Easily, Price of the Rice, it might as well be that. It might as well be hosting something where he gives away rice, because it's about as credible as him hosting any goddamn show, besides whose lines anyway, which is always better than the goddamn cast. But the whole point is, I know the celebrities are always going to be involved in wrestling. I had to eat crow when it came to the bad money thing. I don't care that Johnny Knoxville, the person, does a whole bunch of great stuff for charity. Does a whole bunch of good stuff. He could save a goddamn planet. He could have. He could somehow send something to a goddamn planet that'll save it. That'll you know, give it agriculture. He'll be like you know Matt Damon in The Martian. He'll be able to you know terraform the goddamn thing, and suddenly people will be able to live there. He could do that. I don't care. He should not be in a fucking wrestling ring. He should not be taking up a spot in a once prestigious match. The 92 Rumble is still the best Rumble of all time, in my opinion. The 2022 Rumble may already be dead. They may have already killed that. Oh, Big E might win it. Cool, it's not going to fucking matter. Yeah, he might only be in there a minute. They're devoting too much TV time to this guy who is a fine actor for what he is, but Jackass was always overrated, stupid motherfucking bullshit. Those guys deserve every bit of pain they got, every bit of agony they got, because they were fucking stupid for doing it. And there are people who like it, that's fine. I watched the Jackass movies in theaters, and they were dumb. They were really dumb. And I went in with an open mind. I'm like, you know what? Whatever. They're movies. <clears throat> and I hate every single one of them. But it is what it is. Anyway, he says, uh, you haven't, um, it's like, you haven't qualified for it. What have you done? Pat was losing it during Nakamura's entrance. Boogs! With Nakamura took on Sami Zayn. Cool. Okay, the match wasn't bad. Boogs isn't bad in the ring. I'm over this shtick. I'm, I'm annoyed by it now. I don't hate either of them. And Boogs wins with the most devastating maneuver in all professional wrestling. Surprise, roll up one, two, three. Because of course he fucking does. Why wouldn't he win via roll up? Why doesn't everybody just try to win via roll up? Why doesn't a Royal Rumble match end via roll up? At this point, I think I could win a match via roll up. And I could not do anything athletic if my life depended on it. 
Knoxville sneaks up and um, throws Zane over the top, and that's enough for him, uh, over the top to the floor, by the way, and that's enough for him to uh, be qualified to enter the men's Royal Rumble match. Fucking stupid abomination bullshit. So, why is Kayla in just a bathrobe? I'm not complaining. She looks great. Why was she just in a bathrobe? New Day pointed out that she was just in a bathrobe. Again, not complaining, but really. <clears throat> um, at least on WWE programming. Or WWE program, but it is what it is. Moving on from that. Not going to mention where else I'd like Kayla to be wearing a bathrobe. This is getting awkward. New Day says they're going to beat the Usos. A flair for the dramatic. And her New Year's resolution is different than everybody else. It's all about the Rumble. <clears throat> By the way, she's going to be in the Rumble. I'm just going to say that, but... Okay, so WWE has prided itself on having surprises and everything. And yes, they did the Thunderdome, and maybe there were rumors of surprises, da da da, da all that. And I think after, I think once we got to 1990, because I don't remember the TV leading up to 88 and 89, but the intros for the men's rumble, you know, for, well, they were the men's rumbles in the 90s, they didn't have any women's royal rumbles until 2018. They... You know, Vince McMahon would be, it's time to rumble. It's time for the Royal Rumble. He would do that. And he would get all happy and coked out and everything. And what Vince would end up doing is he would announce all the goddamn people in the rumble. Now, you wouldn't know where they're going to be there, but it is what it is. So, WWE decides to announce that certain people are going to be in the rumble. I mean, they only have three weeks. They could do rumble qualify matches. But why not do this instead? So, let's go with this. Rhea Ripley, Zelina. Okay, that makes sense. Nikki Ash. And then they talk about the returns. <laughs> but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go through everybody else first. Shotzi, Dana, Natty, Carmella, Naomi. Um, we get to we get to Shayna. We get to Lita. Lita's actually going to be in it. That's not surprising. And Michelle McCool. Okay, so now we're getting into the surprises. Michelle McCool being in or whatever is probably going to come out wearing a wet, red hat, just like, you know, her husband wearing the Blue Lives Matter bullshit and everything. Back to blue, you... Fucking idiot Undertaker. Undertaker, nobody really has any sympathy for all the pain you went through anyway. You goddamn MAGA fuck. <clears throat> but, Charlotte puts herself in the rumble. Let's talk about the other people that are going to be in there. Summer Rae. I have no issue with Summer Rae. I thought Summer Rae got a raw deal. You know what? If Summer Rae comes back and she's motivated and can do some stuff, good. 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 Leah's probably going to land on her goddamn head trying to do something because she isn't as athletic as she used to be. But, hopefully she's going to be fine. Summer Rae, though? Cool. Fine. Whatever. Kelly Kelly. Kelly Kelly's been through a whole lot of stuff and everything. I was never the biggest fan of her. I hope she's doing all right because I know she had some personal stuff. Kelly Kelly never belonged in the goddamn ring. She was also never given a whole lot of training. People are going to be happy to see her. Cool. She'll do the head scissors. Ah! Sound like a goddamn, you know, sound like the fly at the end of the goddamn fly. Help me, help me. Help me, I can't get down. It's like Brian, you know, flashing a flashlight on the wall and his girlfriend, like, does a chase thing and everything. <sighs> Whatever. I mean, not as offensive. <clears throat> the one that shocks me, though, <laughs> Mickey James. Mickey James is the current Impact uh, Knockouts champion. Okay. What? Are they doing a Forbidden Door thing? You know, that, that whole thing that Impact and uh, AEW did? You know, the whole thing that benefited... Absolutely nobody but AEW. Impact's worked with New Japan and probably is still working with New Japan. Is this a make good on the trash thing, the trash bag incident, where they decided to take Mickey's, you know, belongings, put it in a trash bag, apparently, and they fired the guy and whatever. And maybe Mickey was called and they said, hey, we need talent. We need to do this stuff. We release a whole bunch of people. You have some of our people that we fired. Um, what can we do? Or maybe they called Impact and then they said, Mickey, you're so fine, you blow my mind. Hey, Mickey. Mickey, make this decision. Help us. <clears throat> help us. Help us with this. We need help. And Mickey probably said, you need to put over impact with a straight face, and also, I need a lot of money. And hopefully, she got at least a quarter of a million. Now, is she the first person to basically either hold up Vince McMahon? And I don't know what the circumstances are. I'm just blue sky and throwing that stuff out there. Is this a great look for Mickey? Is this something that's absolutely, like, you know, <clears throat> great after she knocked the company and just blasted them and everything after the trash bag incident, which I don't blame her for, and she got a lot of pub from it, and a lot of good pub. Are people going to be madder? Sure. Am I saying this is a bit of a weird look? Sure. Am I saying that WWE working with Impact is going to be beneficial to Impact? Well, it's already more beneficial than anything that AEW did. I mean, I'm just saying it right now. Look at the stuff Omega did when he was Impact World Champion. Do you remember anything good? 
Exactly. It didn't boost anybody. I don't know if this is going to boost uh, what they did here. And sure, it seems hypocritical by Mickey. Plenty of people that that company has screwed over have gone back and worked for them. Plenty of people. So if I'm going to knock her for that, then i got to knock everybody else. <clears throat> but now we get to the Bellas. This is how far down the goddamn ladder you have fallen to bring back the fucking Bellas, who weren't any good to begin with. Got a little bit better. They couldn't have gotten any worse. Brie was not good in 2018 when she was teaming with Daniel Bryan, you know, now Bryan Danielson, against Miz and Maurice. She wasn't. And I know she was just coming off of having a kid. And that's great. I hope the kids are healthy. Great. Good. Doesn't have anything to fucking do with her being a wrestler. And Nikki never deserved to be the Divas champion for as long as she was. Had those neck issues. Apparently has some kind of brain issue where... She, uh, like, it was lesions on her brain or something. I don't exactly remember what it is. But she had stuff where she had to retire. So now, all of a sudden, they're bringing her back for the, They're bringing them back for this. You could literally bring back Molly Holly. <clears throat> bring back Trish. Fucking bring in Medusa. Bring in Awesome Kong. Just don't bring in the Bellas. The be I'm sorry. The Bellas and... Why? Just why? Just... Honest to God, what? And you're spoiling the surprises. Oh, we're trying to create moments we don't care because we're not going to be able to draw, uh, you know, we don't have to worry about, you know, pay-per-view buys because it's all on the cock. But this is the whole point of the Rumble. You're announce a few surprises. Oh, hey, you know, um, like, hey, <clears throat> like, Lita's going to be coming back. Okay. Michelle McCool's going to be back. Okay. Those aren't landmark surprises. But the Bellas haven't competed for a goddamn while, and I'm surprised they didn't uh, hold that one off. It's just, it's ridiculous. And then, just goddamn it, this company just doesn't fucking care anymore. Oh, we're, we're trying to put smiles on people's faces. Look, announcing a few people is not the worst thing in the world. Doing this, you might as well have just taken and slapped everybody in the goddamn face. Ow. <sighs> Let's move on. Naomi wants, uh, wants to face uh, Charlotte, and she slaps her. Will we get a match? Yes, we will. We get a match where, well, it was clicking along just fine, just fine. It looked like Naomi was going to win via countout. Sonya came down and said, oh, I'm sorry. Why is Sonya against Naomi? They have never established it. They have never established this at all. At all. It very much reeks of Triple H versus Booker T. Sonya is probably, they're probably wanting Sonya to say, someone like you, Naomi, will never be champion again. People like you are here to make people like me laugh. If she says, if she tells her to fetch her a towel, I'm fucking, I'm gonna fucking rage. That was one of the worst storylines, and that was bad even in 2003. So, um, this match can't be won by countout, so we keep going. And then, oh, it can't be won by DQ, because Naomi was in the ropes and Charlotte wasn't breaking it. And then, natural selection, one, two, three. There you go. That's it. That's all I really have to say. That's all. This show, this, this fucking show, one of the worst SmackDowns I've seen in a while. The worst SmackDown they've had since they've gotten crowds back. Easily. And I know that's only been just about six months right now, but honestly. Usos will be the ones after tonight. Why do they keep having Kayla review or interview all the tag teams all the time? And she has such a smile on her. Okay, moving on. Pierce tells, uh, you know, <coughs> Sony he's got to find an opponent for Roman. By the end of the night, why is Corbin here? Genuine question, why is Corbin here? Sure, he's a nice guy. Fuck him for his loud goddamn shirts. So Don't fuck this happy Corbin thing. Fuck anybody who likes it. Kidding, if you like it, that's fine. We get day one recaps. He brings out Moss that's dressed as Drew McIntyre. This is easily the worst segment WWE has done this year. This is one of the worst segments they've done in the last few years. Embarrassing. Catastrophic. Um, the flaccid um, sword of madcap Moss. Whoever actually came up with this deserves, uh, by the way, to be, you know, cast into a volcano while their family watches. I'm talking for that. And whoever came up with um, <coughs> any of this other shit, it's fucking crap. It's absolute fucking crap. Same with the Johnny Knoxville stuff. I don't care who thinks it's a good idea in WWE. It's a bad idea. Oh, it gets people talking. Not for the right reasons. So... Anyway, here are the Raiders. Remember when they were War Machine, they actually mattered, and the Viking Raiders stuff is absolute dog shit. The stuff they did with the Street Profits was some of the worst television WWE has done. Abolish the tag division is what I wrote down. The Raiders are toast. They lost. So, Sheamus says he will win the Men's Royal Rumble. It will be uh, 10 years after uh, he won the 2012 one. Otherwise, it would be weird if it was 10 years after he won the 2010 one. Considering he didn't compete in that one, it would have been a little awkward. So, Pierce uh, tells um, 
Roman, he has his opponent. And Reigns doesn't care. I'd like to watch my cousins wrestle, so please leave. The Usos took on the New Day in a street fight for the SmackDown Tag Titles. Round number 400,000. They compete well. They are great. And I don't care. I don't care. They did duct tape. We've all been there. Pat says, I don't want to know what Pat's into. They do a whole bunch of stuff and they get a chest plate and a friggin' helmet, you know, the King stuff and everything. Fuck that goddamn shit. If I'm going to knock it in other companies, if I'm going to knock the bullshit in New Japan, I'm knocking it here. And <clears throat> the Usos won. The Usos won. And then Reigns is going to face Seth freaking Rollins at, uh, you know, at the Rumble. Fine. That should be a pretty good match. <sighs> whatever. I don't know why this episode frustrated me so much. Maybe because of the fact of them just nuking both Rumble matches and we're not even, you know, we're, we're not even close to the event. They didn't even get to the event before destroying that. So they better put a solid undercard there because I'm probably just going to, like, just hate it. And I hate feeling that way, but after almost 37 years of watching wrestling and loving the Royal Rumble, this is the least hyped I've been for a Rumble event, I think, ever. Anyway, agree to disagree what I said. Like, share, subscribe, Twitter handle in the description. I'm John Rickland. I'll see you soon.